What's up everybody, this is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Today I have for you something that has not yet been done on YouTube. Um, the Glen Breton Ice Barrel. That's the box. It's 12 years old. Uh, I do believe there's people out there that have done the 10 year old, but no one's done the 12. Um, I had the opportunity to speak with one of the representatives of the distillery. That's the Glenora Distillery in Nova Scotia. Uh, his name's Bob Scott. Thank you very much, Bob, for the information. I tend to only email um, distilleries that I actually enjoy their whiskey, that I plan on giving a good mark to their whiskey. Um, because I don't think it's fair to email a distillery that I'm gonna give their their whiskey a bad mark okay so I don't tend to find information from the distilleries that um, you know produce whiskey that I'm not crazy about and that's to save them the effort of giving me information and then having that information kind of uh, disrespected by giving their whiskey a bad mark. I plan to give every whiskey I try the most honest and fair um, assessment that I can. I don't always get it right, and I don't always have the exact correct information as brought to my attention about, I, I think I made a statement in one of my videos about blended scotch. Um, I do believe that I mentioned that it could be uh, a blend of various whiskeys and that's various grains as well just like the Canadian blends and just like the American blends but um, I did believe and I I do believe many of the higher quality blends are uh, blended malts so like we've talked about before how that's you know um, a, malt, a single malt barley from a uh, barley whiskey sorry from Isla from Highland, from Speyside, from Lowland, from you know mainland or one of the islands. Um, it could be a, a collection of those, and as soon as you start to go to different distilleries, that's when it's a blended malt. Okay, but some of the malt uh, blends, the Scotch blends, do have some other grain whiskeys in them, and I believe uh, Johnny Walker Red is one of those examples. But I digress. That's to address a question that was asked to me earlier uh, yesterday, I believe. Anyway. I'm going to get this poured out. Um, so again, thank you Bob Scott. Um, he actually told me that on the grounds where they have the distillery, they have an apple orchard and um, there's the smell of apples throughout the orchard and it's co coincidental that they're whiskey smells a ton like apples as well um, it's very fruity on the nose okay so I'm gonna give this a smell a taste and I will add some water and I'll tell you why that's something that you might want to consider so non chill filtered no added color it's um, a beautiful color a nice gold okay I don't know if you can pick that up all right, um, it's 12 years old, aged in ice wine barrels from uh, a winery in Nova Scotia as well. Okay, um, ice wine is very common in Canada, especially in Ontario. There's, there's a whole region in Ontario, in Niagara Falls, um, that specializes in various wines, but ice wine is one of those one of the wines that comes out of Niagara and it's a beautiful dessert wine and the reason why uh, I'm not sure exactly what the science is of why it's sweet but what happens is um, they don't pick those grapes whether it's uh, yellow grapes or red grapes they don't pick those grapes until the first frost so usually at the end of the fall so we're, I'm guessing around uh, the end of October, early November, the first frost freezes the grapes. They pick the grapes and then they do the wine process. And for whatever reason, it makes it super sweet. And it's an excellent dessert wine. I'm not sure if you've had the opportunity to try it, but I do recommend it. 
Um, so I guess, I'm, and I'm not sure why other Canadian distilleries haven't tried this yet, but uh, the Glenora Distillery decided, you know what, um, they want to make a product. At, the, the owners are Canadians that have a Scottish heritage. That's why it's, I guess the name wanted to pay homage to the Scottish, Scottish heritage. It actually got them into trouble for a while. There was a legal dispute, they won. They were allowed to call Glen Breton, Glen Breton with the Glen, because you notice that a lot of Scottish distilleries have Glen something or other. Um, they won the legal battle, and it, it had to do with something, uh, I believe it's a mountain in Nova Scotia that's uh, called Glenora, or something of that sort. Anyway, um, and then uh, Breton being Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, okay? so. They wanted to do their own rendition of a Canadian whiskey that paid homage to their heritage and totally respectable. Instead of using sherry, ex, ex sherry casks, they decided to use ice wine casks. And it's crazy what, how it's changed completely. And, but still has some of that characteristic that you find in a scotch, okay? So anyway, 100% malted barley, uh, aged malted barley whiskey aged in ice barrels ice wine barrels on the nose you get a wine smell right off the hop it's actually similar to something that you would get off of a, a tomatin 12 year old or 14 year old it has a very um, wine concentrated smell to it beautiful nose beautiful nose it's like a ripe grape You get some vanilla, you get other, you get fruit, you get apple like uh, Bob Scott described, okay. Um, he described it as a honey crisp asp apple. I, I would say, yeah, um, it's definitely apple and it's a very, very pleasant fruitiness to it. Okay. Um, Maybe a touch of oak, very, very subtle. Okay. Um, I'm gonna add some, sorry, I'm gonna taste it first, then I'm gonna add some water to it. Okay, so on the palate. Okay, so it's bottled at 43% alcohol. And there's a touch of um, a pepperiness, but not unpleasant at all. It's sweet, it's honeyed. Um, again, that apple and that vanilla come through on the palate as well. And that grapiness, that, that wine. Um, it, for me, it doesn't taste like ice wine. It's not sweet like an ice wine. It's, it's not as sweet as some of your sherry um, whiskeys, your sherry aged whiskeys. Um, but it's, it's very, very well balanced. Okay. I'm going to add some water and normally I only add water if I find after doing my research, after trying it a couple times, um, I found it improved the whiskey. And in this case, I do feel it does. It takes a, away a little bit from the nose in my experience. I'm going to try it again, but uh, the palate just smoothens it right up. So you do, you do lose that, that wininess, that, that wine smell, that ripe grape smell a little bit. It's still fruity, you still get a little bit of apple. You get much more vanilla now. The vanilla is pronounced quite a bit. Okay, it's a touch floral now. Still very sweet, like a honey, a honey bread even. Okay, on the palate. Okay, so you saw how much I put. Literally an espresso spoon of water and it becomes butter on the palate. It's so smooth, it's 
silky on the palate. It's got a nice texture. Uh, it's very, it's it's fuller somehow. Okay, so the water actually brings out that uh, unchill filtered effect. Okay. Again. Okay, so one of my subscribers had tried this and um, said that they weren't a big fan. It's not cheap, it's 98 bucks Canadian uh, at the LCBO. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it is abroad. I think I did see it on Master of Malt for about 40 pounds. Um, so they're getting it for what the convert conversion would be, about $80. So anywhere from 80 to a hundred dollars Canadian um, 40 pounds it's it's worth it in my opinion um, I'm not gonna mention the subscribers name because I'm not sure he would like me to do so but um, I'm not sure maybe your palate was off the day that you tried it maybe if you did have a bottle of it perhaps well, it's just a difference of opinion that's and that's cool that does happen I would recommend if you haven't already to add the drop of water because on the palate it becomes so much more buttery, so much more smooth. Um, it might lose a touch of the sweetness, but all the fruitiness and the vanilla is just emphasized, okay? So uh, you do lose a bit of that nose when you add the water, but it makes up for it in the palate and it depends on what you prefer, okay? I, I recommend that you smell it for a long while before adding water and then add some water and taste it because uh, well do a little bit of both but that's the best combination you could possibly do for this particular whiskey it is a fantastic whiskey in my opinion without water um, I would have given it either a B plus a minus but with the water it's a solid uh, a minus okay for sure it's an a minus um, Glenora Distillery is, so far I've only tried two of their whiskeys. I tried the 10 year old, which is pretty common in Ontario, and I've tried this. And I've been waiting for this for a long time, uh, well, or the 10 year old version of it. Um, on the website, there's a whole bunch of different expressions. They have a 19 year old ice barrel age. They have just a ton of different expressions. I would love to try and review uh, a whole bunch more if I ever get a chance to travel to Nova Scotia I will buy quite a few but for whatever reason I can't um, order them from the distillery and have them sent here uh, one of the problems of being an Ontario resident but it is what it is um, anyway solid a minus if you like this video please subscribe subscribe below if you are already a subscriber thank you very much I have noticed an influx in subscribers the last little while and I appreciate all of you thank you very much um, I am on Instagram and Twitter on Instagram I'm at whiskey in the six and on Twitter I'm at whiskey underscore in underscore the underscore six let's go Raptors they play tonight uh, it's gonna be a tough go against the Cleveland, uh, Cla uh, Cleveland Cavaliers LeBron James is an absolute beast but hey uh, that's why they play the games because you never know what can happen, right? So here's hoping. Cheers, guys.